Does God give me everything I ask for? Cool. Hi, it's Shelly. Welcome to my channel where I take ideas like that, measure them up against the Word of God to see what's true. So in John 14, 13, it says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that my Father may be glorified. In Matthew 7, 7, it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. I remember growing up and when I would ask my parents for things either we couldn't afford or they're like, you don't need that. Um, I remember my dad saying, hey, what does it look like I'm made out of money? Money doesn't grow on trees, you know? And I remember thinking, that would be so cool if it did. But my heavenly father isn't limited by anything. I should be able to have anything I ask when I ask of him. There's this very popular woman on YouTube. She's from this huge ministry. And she describes the Holy Spirit as her genie, like from Aladdin. She says that she's even seen him and he's blue. You remember when Aladdin rubs the lamp and the genie comes popping out and he says, yes, master. And Aladdin's like, wait, me? I'm the master? I mean, I'm just like this regular street rat. You mean you have to do whatever I say? And the genie did tell him that there were some qualifications to any kind of wish he asked for. And one was he couldn't raise somebody from the dead. Another was that he couldn't make somebody fall in love with Aladdin. And the third one was, oh, I can't remember. Okay, if you can remember the third one, leave it in the comments below, that's gonna bug me. But so according to this woman, she says that the Holy Spirit is our genie. That means that we are the master. The Holy Spirit is our helper kind of like our sidekick, he's our servant. What? Okay, we know that just by listening to that, that that sounds super prideful, crazy, and ridiculous. But can some of that kind of thinking seep into our prayers? I mean, do we ever demand of God, command God, kind of like rubbing our Bible and expecting that Jesus will show up and give us everything we want like a genie because I have stood on that scripture, ask whatever you want and he will do it. Is God obligated to obey me? Have you ever seen the movie Bruce Almighty? Morgan Freeman plays God and he takes a break from being God and he lets Jim Carrey take a whack at it. At first, Jim Carrey loves being God, right? All powerful, everywhere he goes, he just kind of can do whatever he wants. But suddenly, all the prayers of the world become flooding into him at rapid pace and he can't keep up with them. Of course, that's not how God is. And he gets so flooded that he finally just goes yes to all the prayers. And of course we know absolute chaos becomes the norm, right? Everything is going wrong. Imagine if we got everything we asked for exactly when we prayed for it. If I'm a Christian on a sports team and I'm a believer and I pray that our team will win and I'm expecting, because I can have whatever I ask for, that God is going to supernaturally tip the favor into my team so that we can win because I asked him to. But what happens if there's a believer on the other team that asks the same thing? Who is God going to answer? Does it come down to who has the greater faith? Let's get ready to rumble, Christian against Christian, right? You see where this is going. One of my favorite apologists, his name is Mike Winger, and I will leave the link for his channel below. He is amazing. He describes that if we just take one scripture and we say that that's all the Bible has, that's all the instruction the Bible has to say on that matter is in that one scripture, we are headed for trouble. It's like he describes if we are um, in the passenger seat and we're teaching our teenager how to drive and the only instruction that we give on how to drive is stay to the right. Now that can be great instruction some of the time, 
but it can totally lead to disaster if that's all we ever say on the matter, right? On all what you need to know about how to drive, stay to the right. In the thought of God will give me everything I ask for, what other instructions does God have to say on the matter? In Matthew 6, 9, Jesus models a great prayer for us, and this is just the beginning of it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In 1 John 5, 14 through 15, it says this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we've asked him. So what we pray, it sounds like, has to be according to his will, what he wants. He knows his master plan, and it's his plan and not mine. The Bible even says, if we're kind of confused, well, how do I know the will of God? In James 1, 5, it says that we can ask for wisdom if we need help in knowing what the will of God is and how to pray. We know that the Bible says that he disciplines those he loves. He may need to humble us. We are going to be put through trials for all kinds of reasons because he is at work in us. He is working on our character. I remember back in college, okay, this is an embarrassing story, but I'm going to tell it anyway so that it'll be helpful. When I was first a Christian and I was so excited about Jesus, I was running all around my campus telling people about Jesus, witnessing, inviting them to Bible studies. And I kind of had this sociology test coming up that I needed to study for, but I was running around doing so many things for God, I kind of lost track of time and didn't study. So when I went into the psychology building and I sat down and they passed out the test, I quickly folded my hands and prayed, God, it says in your word that if we ask anything in your name, you will give it to us. So I pray that you will give me the answers to this test. Imagine my surprise when I got that test back and I had a big fat F on the test. I, mean, I was so shocked. I literally was genuinely shocked because I thought, hey, what happened? I mean, I was doing good things for you and I kind of thought we sort of had this agreement worked out, like I got your back, you got mine. I also used to think that if I added the phrase in the name of Jesus, to the end of any of my prayers, that that tagline was kind of like a for sure guarantee. That was the extra bump I would need to make sure that prayer got answered. It was kind of like a Christian version of bippity boppity boo. Again, in John 14, 13, it says, if we are praying in his name, it needs to be so that we are bringing glory to God. Not so that I just get whatever I want, but am I praying the kind of prayer that would bring God glory? So me not studying for my test and just expecting that he was going to do what I asked him to do is not bringing honor to the Father. Our motives can be kind of tricky. And knowing our own motives is even trickier. James 4, 3 says, When you ask and you don't receive, it's because you've asked with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So the next thing I'm learning is that we can't ask with bad motives. So if we're praying and our heart is that we're bearing good fruit for God, I'm praying for patience. I'm praying that I would be kind to somebody who's getting on my nerves. God, help me to forgive somebody who's hurt my feelings. God, help me advance your kingdom. Then I know that those kinds of prayers line up with other things God says that are in his will and that he's for. And in that, I can be confident that he's hearing them. In Matthew 7, 11, it says, If you, then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father who is in heaven knows how to give good gifts to his children who asks for them. But he needs to define what is good. He is the ultimate good parent. When my kids were little and you know, when they're three and they don't wanna hold your hand anymore walking across the street 
and you know that that's not safe and yet there's this kind of rebellion against them this is what's good mama I know I can do it myself but we have a bigger understanding of the dangers that are out there or the road that lies ahead. So we grab their hand and we say, no, sorry, baby, you can't walk across the street without me holding your hand because it's not good for you. And as a good parent, I am not going to allow you to have something that wouldn't be good for you. The Bible says that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are much bigger than our thoughts. His perspective, his understanding of the whole picture is so much bigger than ours. So we have to trust in him ultimately. So if we pray and we do get the job, we do get the promotion, we do get the guy, we do get the healing. We can trust that it's because God knows that that is what's best for us. That is good for us. And it falls in line with his will and his purposes. This is the tough part. If we don't get the job, we don't get the promotion, we don't get the guy, we don't even get our healing even good things that we ask for and we don't get them, will we still trust that he is sovereign, that he is in control, that he is a good father and that he sees the big picture and he knows what his plan is and we still trust him anyway. There is no joy like when we have prayed for something and we've stood and believed and we see God's goodness come through and we can praise him in those moments and turn and thank him for his goodness. But when we stand on a scripture like God gives us anything we ask for and it doesn't come to pass this side of heaven, I also have seen great heartache and confusion and people fall into being disillusioned with God and even walk away from their faith thinking, I don't understand why God wouldn't answer this prayer for me. Isn't he on my side? Doesn't he love me? And when God doesn't say yes to our prayer like we think that that scripture means, we can be really let down and disappointed in God. Let's look at a great prayer that Jesus prayed when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, right before he went to the cross. In Luke 22, 42, it says, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Boy, that is a tough pray prayer to pray in certain circumstances, right? But does God want us to pray? Absolutely. Does God still answer prayers? For sure. But does God give me everything I ask for? No. And that's what's true. 